Hello everyone and welcome to Sky Scholar. Today is the fourth anniversary of this channel. I'd like to thank all my subscribers for watching and for supporting me. When Sky Scholar started, we hoped to gain perhaps a few thousand subscribers. At the time, I remember thinking that Sky Scholar would probably never reach 10,000 subscribers. To my great surprise, today we have nearly 32,000. While each video presents my own stance on modern astrophysics, the comment sections have been lively with your views and I'd like to thank everyone for participating. Each of you will have to make up their own mind. In fact, that is part of the scientific method. Do not let your objectivity be influenced by anyone choosing to forgo the facts. Instead, look at each situation with an unbiased eye to learn the truths about nature. Sky Scholar was created to disseminate ideas to a broad audience in a way that allowed these lectures to remain permanent. For now, they are on YouTube, but perhaps in the future they will be placed on other services. Astrophysics has long suffered from a lack of critical review, and Sky Scholar attempts to bring the resultant shortcomings to light. It is too easy to keep advancing in a scientific field without critically reviewing the foundations upon which the house stands. Sky Scholar seeks to question those weak foundations in astrophysics. This includes the widespread use of Kirchhoff's invalid law of thermal emission, the outdated standard model of the sun, the microwave background confusion, and the mental gymnastics which currently characterize stellar evolution. I'd like to take a moment to highlight the topics we have covered here at Sky Scholar in the last four years. The most important videos focus on the sun and the stars, both with respect to the standard model and the new liquid metallic hydrogen solar model. Several videos present evidence for a real solar surface and the need for a true lattice in producing the solar spectrum. The work on Kirchhoff's law has been completed. There are now 12 videos on the topic and I have authored many papers as well. The fact that Kirchhoff's law is invalid has consequences throughout astrophysics. For physics, it means that Planck's equation lacks the universality he sought. Planck's equation remains valid, but only for actual black bodies, not for any arbitrary cavity at thermal equilibrium. It takes a physical lattice to produce a continuous thermal spectrum, and that fact collapses both the standard gaseous models of the Sun and the Big Bang. The question is now in the hands of the condensed matter physicists, not the astronomers. Once causality is brought to Planck's equation, astrophysics will be forced into change. It is coming, but it will take time. I have also presented lectures on the laws of thermodynamics, and I have applied them to outline severe problems in astrophysics. The presence of non-intensive temperatures in the work of Arthur Eddington relative to the mass-luminosity relation, in the work of Stephen Hawking relative to black holes, and the work of Eugene Parker relative to the solar winds are all errors. The misuse of the gas laws by men like James Jeans in deriving the Jeans mass and others in the misapplication of the virial theorem has also been discussed. Stephen Crothers has participated in some of these steps and we have co-authored papers on these subjects exposing these violations of simple thermodynamic principles. Temperature in physics must always be intensive. Theories outside the bounds of thermodynamics are also outside the bounds of science itself. The problems I have highlighted are serious. The fact that I have done so has raised the indignation of many in the astrophysics community. I have also begun to produce a series of videos outlining problems with the microwave background. There will be at least three more videos on the subject. All of these scripts have already been drafted. I have carefully exposed the failures of microwave background research for anyone who is interested in an objective look at the problem. This also includes one video on the Hiruni radio telescope which disproved the existence of a cosmic monopole signal required by the astrophysicist. The monopole will end up being reassigned to the oceans of the Earth. When the famous image of the black hole was released, I was asked by many of you to review the findings. We now have multiple videos highlighting my concern from an imaging perspective. I consider claims that a black hole has been imaged 
to be outside the realm of proper science, a product of the inappropriate extension of imaging methods. Due to the condensed nature of the stars, black holes can never be formed through the collapse of a gas. Stephen Crothers has already criticized the use of relativity in black holes in his papers and videos. In the coming year, I hope to complete the series on the microwave background and the sun. After that, stellar evolution will be our next task. For now, I am taking a short pause from producing Sky Scholar videos. We'll be back in August or September to continue this adventure at your side. In the meantime, know that I am grateful for all the encouragement I have received, not only from my subscribers, but from my friends and from those scientists who have urged me never to give up. I wish everyone well, and in the meantime, feel free to catch up on Sky Scholar videos you've missed and share them with your friends and members of the scientific community. It's been an amazing four years, and I look forward to seeing you again very soon.